Chapter 11, When the Rabbit Gets Anxious, It Bites Anyone who bullies Xiaolan, I I'll fight them to the death Lu Fun was petite, and her words lacked intimidation, but everyone knew she wasn't joking When a rabbit is cornered, it bites Lu Fun was a mother rabbit pushed to the edge of a cliff, and if she took one step back, her daughter Xiaolan would be the one to fall. How could she step back? Xiao Dajuan held his aching waist and said, Is this woman crazy? Lu Fun stood in front of Xiaolan, and she did seem a bit crazy. Xiao Dajuan clenched his fists but didn't strike. He could easily overpower Lu Fun with a single blow, but what would happen afterward? Suddenly, Xia Dajuan felt a bit hesitant. His daughter Xiaolan was looking at him with an ice-cold, emotionless gaze, and his wife, Lu Fen, looked at him with both hatred and fear. Xiaolan lowered the scissors and went forward to embrace Lu Fen's shoulders, saying, Mom, let's go. This woman had shown remarkable courage at this moment, and she was fiercely protecting Xiaolan. She was giving Xiaolan a kind of maternal love that was beyond what the original person had ever expected. Even if Lu Fun was ignorant and timid, Xiaolan couldn't abandon her for this reason. Lu Yong snorted, You people from the Xiao family are all terrible. You don't want your wife and daughter, and yet my niece still has to beg you for food. Today, I'm making it clear, Xiaolan has no more connections with the Xiao family from now on. Xiaolan was 18 years old, an adult. In rural areas, while information was limited, society encouraged women to be self-reliant. Women can hold up half the sky, as the leaders said. Xiaolan was ready to pursue higher education, and there was nothing extraordinary about that. In 1983, university students were precious. Xiaolan might have forgotten much of the academic content from her previous life, but she was determined to relearn it. After getting her life in order, she might as well go to university for fun. Xia Hongbing was unconsciously released by Liu Yong. Xiaolan's appearance was quite appealing, and her demeanor, even when not being confrontational, gave off an air of strength that the Xiao family couldn't match. Xiaolan was more experienced and knowledgeable than they were. She didn't want to resort to violence, as she had worked hard to achieve success, but she realized that if she didn't stand her ground, everyone would trample on her. Xiaolan, who was normally charming, suddenly turned icy, leaving Xia Dajuan confused about why he was afraid of her. He watched as Xiaolan and the others pushed the bicycle and disappeared at the village entrance. The busybodies, who had been frightened earlier, emerged again and started gossiping. Dajuan, why didn't you beat her up just now? She has no respect for her elders, there's no discipline. Your big brother has gotten rich and has the confidence to stand up for your wife. Without even having a son, you've got nothing, Dajuan, and you're still good-natured. Is it true that your mother got sick from anger? Xiaolan is so unruly, always talking about life and death. Listening to these voices, Xia Dajuan lost his ability to think. He had failed to consider his actions, and his older brother, Xia Hongbing, sighed and said, by the way Xiaolan talked, she seemed to hate even Ziyu. This girl doesn't differentiate between good and bad. Ziyu isn't even mad at her, but she. Oh well, let's not talk about these vexing matters. Let's go inside and see how mother is. Three brothers locked the front door, leaving the gossips disappointed. Xia Dajuan went to look after his mother, and Xia Hongbing dragged his brother to the side to discuss matters related to the vacant room. Whether Lu Fun would come back or not wasn't discussed at this point, but the family turmoil had become too unsightly. Xiaolan's fiery temper might make it hard for her to return. 
Xiao Lan was strong-willed and determined, which she had been in her past life. She had worked her way up to becoming a high-ranking executive in a multinational company's China division. Despite her fiery temper, Xiao Lan had a vast knowledge and was more sophisticated than the Xia family. With the scissors in her hand, she could use them to defend herself or to strike out at others. In most cases, Xiao Lan preferred to solve problems with her intellect rather than violence. But now, she had been reduced to a target for anyone to trample on. Xiao Lan, who was usually sweet and charming, had suddenly become icy, leaving Xia Dajuan baffled about why he was afraid of her. He watched as Xiao Lan and the others pushed the bicycle and disappeared at the village entrance. The busybodies, who had been frightened earlier, emerged again and started gossiping. Dajuan, why didn't you beat her up just now? She has no respect for her elders, there's no discipline. Your big brother has gotten rich and has the confidence to stand up for your wife. Without even having a son, you've got nothing, Dajuan, and you're still good-natured. Is it true that your mother got sick from anger? Xiaolan is so unruly, always talking about life and death. Listening to these voices, Xia Dajuan lost his ability to think. He had failed to consider his actions, and his older brother, Xia Hongbing, sighed and said, by the way Xia Lan talked, she seemed to hate even Ziyu. This girl doesn't differentiate between good and bad. Ziyu isn't even mad at her, but she. Oh well, let's not talk about these vexing matters. Let's go inside and see how mother is. Three brothers locked the front door, leaving the gossips disappointed. Xia Dajuan went to attend to his elderly mother, and Wang Jingui took her man to the side to discuss the matter of the vacant room. They didn't talk about whether Liu Fun would return for now, but the family conflict had become too unsightly. Xiao Lan's fiery temperament might make it difficult for her to come back. Wang Jingui wanted to secure the empty room first. With the whole Xia family crowded in one courtyard, living space was quite limited. Xia Hongbing went to accompany their mother, who was lying in bed with an illness. He was the only one among his brothers who believed that their mother's illness was genuine. He knew it was an act, but he didn't want to expose it. Only by doing so could his younger brother feel guilty and obey their mother's wishes, continuing to earn money for the family. Except for Xia Dajuan, who was like a blunt tool, the other two brothers each had their own ulterior motives. Xia Hongbing's wife, Zhang Chui, was in the room, accompanying her mother-in-law, and occasionally making casual remarks. Xia Dajuan's mind was clouded with anger, and he wished he could drag the disobedient and unfilial Xiaolan back and beat her to a pulp. When Zhang Chui felt the time was right, she came out of the room and, with no one around, expressed her concerns to Xia Hongbing. She said, that wretched girl has run away with her uncle, and Ziyu asked us to look after her. Zhang Chui and Xia Hongbing, though they had a son of their own, held their daughter's words in high regard. Xia Hongbing suppressed his anger and said, How can you say that? She almost died after hitting her head. I deliberately delayed bringing her the news for two days, and when I came back, she was perfectly fine and running around with Lu Yong. Ziyu was right. Xiao Lan held grudges against their family, but Wang Jianhua was willing to get close to Ziyu because Ziyu was outstanding. Xia Hongbing didn't think he had done anything wrong. He was merely listening to his daughter. Ziyu had said that Wang Jianhua would have a promising future, and Xiao Lan couldn't have him. Even if their niece had a better life, could Xia Dajuan, as their big uncle, benefit from it? Of course, he had to ensure that his own daughter had a good life for him to enjoy. Xiao Lan had temporarily left everything in Dahong village behind. 
Lu Fen's maternal family, Qi Jing Village, was a three-hour journey from Dahong Village. One was to the east of Anqing County, and the other was to the southwest. Xiaolan's grandfather and grandmother had settled in Qi Jing Village to escape famine. They had arrived when they were young and passed away relatively early, leaving behind three children with no close relatives to take care of them. Lu Yong hadn't been upstanding in his youth but managed to raise his two sisters. Xiao Lan also had an aunt who had married and moved to a neighboring county, but she didn't visit frequently. When Lu Yong brought his wife and daughter back to Qi Jing village, it was already dark, and they didn't attract much attention from the village. Xiao Lan's aunt, Li Fomei, couldn't sleep and was waiting in the main room, holding her child. Hearing noise at the door, she rushed to open it, eagerly asking, You've come back. How are Xiao Lan and the others? Lu Yong moved aside, and Xiao Lan stepped forward to greet her aunt. Li Fomei heard the confidence and liveliness in Xiao Lan's voice, which naturally lightened her own tone. She said, I heard you hit your head at home. It almost scared me to death. And wouldn't you know, your little cousin also had a high fever. I didn't lose a hand in taking care of him. Thank goodness you're all right. Lu Yong had argued with Li Fomei for not going to see Xiaolin earlier, and Li Fomei felt a bit wronged, but mostly, she was fearful. If something had happened to Xiaolin, Lu Yong would certainly have blamed her. Seeing that Xiao Lan was fine, Li Fomei quickly explained the situation. Xiao Lan wasn't ungrateful, her aunt wasn't the same as her uncle, and there was no blood relation between them. Plus, everyone naturally favored their own children. Xiao Dajuan was an exception, as he was exceptionally fond of other people's daughters. Aunt, I'm fine. Is Tao Tao feeling better now? Tao Tao was Xiao Lan's little cousin, who was held by Li Fomei. He looked tired. Lu Yong was growing impatient and said, let's go inside and talk. My little sister is here too. From now on, she and Xiao Lan will stay at our place. Only then did Li Fomei notice that Lu Fen, who had been following behind Xiao Lan, had brought a lot of luggage with her. It didn't seem like she was just coming for a short visit to her mother's family. Had things completely fallen apart with the Xia family? Chapter 12 Planning to Start a Business Lu Fen appeared to be lost in thought, completely absorbed in her own world, and didn't even greet her sister-in-law. If it weren't for the bandage on Xiaolan's forehead, Li Fomei would have mistaken Lu Fen for the one who had bumped her head. She looked absent-minded, so Li Fomei put aside her thoughts about their behavior and quickly put her son on the bed, helping Lu Yong with the luggage. Lu Yong muttered under his breath, cursing the Xiao family, especially Da Jiwen, and briefly explained the situation, including the decision of the three women to leave. It coincided with the return of Xia Dajuan and his brothers, resulting in a big confrontation that led to their departure from Dahong village. Lu Yang's intention was for Xiao Lan and her daughter to live with them and not return to the Xiao family to endure more suffering. He said, you set up the bed in the west room for them to stay. However, he didn't specify how long they should stay. Xiao Lan, well versed in social dynamics, quickly expressed her loyalty to Li Fomei, saying, I want to start a small business, save some money to settle down in Anqing County. There are more opportunities there, and it also prevents these people from gossiping. Xiao Lan knew she wouldn't stay at her uncle's house indefinitely. Her uncle genuinely welcomed her and her daughter, and her aunt, Li Fomei, wasn't likely to be petty. Xiao Lan, a mature individual, understood that living with relatives for an extended period could lead to friction. She was just temporarily taking refuge and didn't mind explaining a bit to put her aunt's mind at ease. 
Lu Yong understood the subtext in Xiao Lan's words. He didn't argue but thought to himself that Xiao Lan wouldn't be so optimistic once she experienced hardship. Young people always thought the outside world was simple. Yes, in recent years, some people had made money in business, but could Xiao Lan endure the hardships? In the lamplight, Xiao Lan noticed her aunt's smile had become more genuine. Her aunt said, You, young lady, are still family. Your uncle wants you and your mother to stay, so just feel at home. Her generosity was due to Liu Yang's recent success in earning money. It wasn't a big problem to have a couple more people at the dinner table for a while. Li Fomei quickly tidied up the room. Nowadays, people didn't fuss over things too much. The bed was laid with straw underneath and a mat on top, which was far better than the old Xia family house. Xiao Lan and her mother had been kicked out of the Xia family the day before and had been on the move, so they were quite exhausted. Mother and daughter washed their faces and lay down on the bed. Xiao Lan patted Lu Fen's hand and said, Don't worry, I'll make sure both of us have a good life. We'll live well and show others that we can enjoy life, no matter what. After a while, Xiao Lan thought Lu Fen had fallen asleep and said, Mom just wants you to have a good life. Xiao Lan, don't blame Mom. I've made you suffer. Xiao Lan said some comforting words. Before achieving results, any verbal promises seemed somewhat hollow. She was truly exhausted, and as she spoke, she fell asleep. The next morning, Xiao Lan woke up to the smell of food. Lu Fen had already gotten up and was working in the kitchen. Her little cousin, Tao Dao, was in good spirits today. He was bustling around his aunt in the kitchen. Lu Fen picked a steamed bun from the steamer and gave it to him. Although it was scalding hot, Tao Dao couldn't bear to spit it out and mumbled with a mouthful, Auntie's steamed buns are tastier than my mom's. Anqing County was located at the boundary between the north and south. In the present day, it was cold in the winter and lacked heating. The region had an awkward climate, blending both northern and southern culinary habits. In the past few days, the Lu family had been eating sweet potato congee and large wheat buns. Xiao Lan opened her suitcase to find some clothes to wear and had a pleasant surprise. In the suitcase, she found a stack of money wrapped in a handkerchief 18 yuan and 3 mao in total. It was the former owner's secret stash. At the bottom of the suitcase were a few letters with bold and passionate wording, written by Wang Jianhua. Xiao Lan reluctantly read them, and then she laughed. It seemed that this man had openly declared his love for the previous owner. Xiao Yu's tactics were indeed impressive. Xiao Lan considered burning the letters but decided to keep them in case they might come in handy one day. As she closed the suitcase, Tao Tao entered the room and called out, Auntie, Xiao Lan is awake. Tao Tao was very attached to Xiao Lan, and even the previous feisty Xiao Lan couldn't resist his adorable looks. Children have a natural, uncorrupted sense of aesthetics. Their perception of people and things is straightforward and clear. To Tao Tao, Xiao Lan was beautiful, and even when she was in a bad mood, it looked good on her. Xiao Lan hadn't had much experience with children, but her mental age wasn't 18. When she saw such a cute kid, she had no resistance. She reached out and touched Tao Tao's forehead, feeling relieved. She said, your forehead isn't hot, so it seems you're not running a fever. Tao Tao, a bit slow, felt that Xiao Lan was being very gentle with him. He followed Xiao Lan to the bathroom when she washed her face. He was with her while she combed her hair, not leaving her side. He looked at Xiao Lan, took a bite of his steamed bun, and said with a smile, Xiao Lan, does your head still hurt? You're really pretty. 
Indeed, she was quite pretty. After a little tidying up, her hair was braided into two pigtails, and she changed into a clean, patch-free dress. Xiao Lan felt she looked excessively good. After getting herself ready, Xiao Lan led Tao Tao to the kitchen. Lu Fen didn't seem any different and Xiao Lan wondered what was going on in her mind. She said, we'll be able to eat in a while. Your uncle and aunt went to check on the rice. It'll be ready to harvest in a couple of days. Just then, they heard Lu Yang's voice, is she cooking sweet potato kanji? He took off his hat and hung it on the wall. When he saw Xiao Lan, he smiled and said, You're awake. I told your mom not to wake you up. You've been injured, you need some rest. They caught a wild boar in the neighboring village, and your aunt went to buy some meat. In rural areas, meat wasn't a common part of the diet, and everyone usually saved it for special occasions. Tao's mouth was watering, and Xiao Lan was naturally moved. Lu Yong had always been generous despite his poverty, and now that he had earned some money, he was even more generous. Until the grain was safely stored, Lu Yong wouldn't leave the house. His bicycle was now available, and he asked, Can you ride this? Xiao Lan nodded. She had indeed ridden this type of old-fashioned bicycle before. It wasn't very compact, but it was capable of carrying goods. It had been originally designed for military transport able to traverse rough roads and carry hundreds of jean, a Chinese unit of weight, of goods, including passengers. Lu Yang's intention was for Xiao Lan to use the bike to start her egg business, taking advantage of the busy farming season to get the business going. If Xiao Lan couldn't handle the hardship, Lu Yong would come up with another solution for her. Li Feng Mei returned with two jean of pork and a bone. The fat layer on it was about three fingers thick, and it was swimming in fat. Nowadays, people didn't prefer lean meat, everyone's stomachs needed some fat. Li Feng Mei was quite proud to have gotten this two gene of meat. The family gathered around the table to eat, and Li Feng Mei overheard Xiao Lan and Lu Yong having a serious discussion about the details of the business. This made her even happier, and she asked, How will you transport those eggs to the city? Won't they break on the bumpy road? In 1983, not every village had proper roads, let alone asphalt. Riding a bike would be a bumpy journey. People could endure it, but the eggs couldn't. Out of 100 eggs, at least 10 would break, and Xiao Lan wouldn't make any money. Xiao Lan had already thought about this problem. In the modern world, eggs for long-distance transportation were typically packed in egg cartons, and the smooth roads allowed them to be transported far without issue. However, with her current limited resources, she couldn't get plastic egg cartons. But she had an alternative plan. She said, I'll weave small baskets with reed ropes, each the size of an egg. I'll put the eggs inside one by one and connect them in strings. She would stuff the gaps with chopped wheat straw or rice straw, which should serve as a makeshift shock absorber. Lu Fun was excited and said, I can weave those. Just tell me how they should look. Chapter 13, Mobilizing the Young Scouts to Work Lu Fun was truly skilled with her hands. Xiao Lan narrated, and she could weave with just a bit of straw, creating something that looked remarkably similar. Seeing Xiao Lan's initiative, Lu Yong didn't pay much attention to her. After finishing their meal, he went back to release water from the rice fields. Some fields still had water, and they needed to drain it before they could start harvesting. Releasing water from the field sometimes led to unexpected catches, like loaches, yellow eels, and even palm-sized Christian carp. These were wild delicacies highly valued in the future, but they were just ordinary finds at this time. 
The Christian carp was small and had many bones, making it troublesome to eat. Loaches and yellow eels needed a generous amount of oil to be delicious. Was it worth using precious oil to cook these two things? Boiling them without proper preparation wasn't tasty, the earthy smell was a big issue. Xiaolan sighed. These were high-protein, low-fat sources of meat, yet the diners of the 1980s didn't appreciate them. At first, Xiaolan thought it was a way to make money, and her eyes sparkled with enthusiasm. However, Lu Yong pointed out that the loaches wouldn't fetch a good price, and even dried loaches only sold for a few cents per jean. In any case, they wouldn't sell for more than a dime. Eggs were more profitable. Lu Yong grabbed a Christian carp and tossed it into a wooden bucket. He said, these things are dirty and stinky. You'd better stick with the eggs. Uncle, please don't waste the Christian carp. Make some Christian carp soup for Tao Tao. Kids need it to grow tall and stay healthy. Xiao Lan said. Lu Yong was taken aback and asked, Where did you hear that? Xiao Lan thought, Isn't this common knowledge? Well, in 1983, there wasn't a clear line between common knowledge and less common knowledge. She just made up a source, saying, I read it in a book. Better not ask me which book. I can't really answer that. I'm afraid Lu Yong would ask for more details. Xiao Lan ran off with her little shadow, her younger cousin. The villagers who were helping Lu Yong work heaved a sigh of relief. Xiao Lan was incredibly beautiful, and no one dared to look at her inappropriately, especially considering Lu Yong's previous reputation as a troublemaker in Qijing village. Whoever dared to have any thoughts about his niece would be in big trouble. Lu Yong wiped the sweat from his neck and glared at the people around him. He said, let me tell you all, if anyone dares to have any ideas about my niece, I'll find out and make them regret it. The villagers were aggrieved and said, Brother Yong, she's like a niece to me. I wouldn't have any improper thoughts. Lu Yong threw a wooden bucket at them and said, you talk too much. Hurry up and catch fish. Didn't Xiao Lan say that children need to drink more Christian carp soup? Xiao Lan took her little cousin and wandered around Qijing village. Qijing village was abundant in water resources, and the reed beds from Dei village extended here. The white flowers on the reeds in Anqing County had been famous for a long time. Reed resources were easily accessible, but Xiao Lan didn't have plans to make reed weaving products. The timing wasn't right, and the reed weaving market in Anqing County was already saturated. However, the reed beds didn't only provide weaving materials, they were also habitats for wild ducks and water hens. For Xiao Lan, they were sources of income, like waving banknotes in her hands. Protecting the environment was important, but she would deal with that once she solved her basic survival needs. Compared to the bandits and robbers who made their fortune through unlawful means, her money-making method was already quite clean. After strolling around, Xiao Lan finally caught her target. A few kids slightly older than Tao Tao ran over, teasing him, Tao Tao, did your sister become dumb from the accident? Xiao Lan was exasperated by their unfriendly remarks. These kids were much more direct than the young adults who had been swayed by her beauty. Meeting these children just to mock her felt harsh. Tao Tao refused to agree, saying, My sister Xiao Lan is not dumb. You're talking nonsense. Xiao Lan chuckled and handed Tu Mao to her little cousin, saying, Go to the convenience store and buy some snacks. I'm tired, so I'll wait for you under the tree, all right? The simple and innocent children couldn't compete with Xiao Lan, the crafty old fox. When Tao Tao came back with the candy, they all started to salivate. 
Xiaolan seized the opportunity and said, Do you want some candy? They all nodded eagerly. Xiaolan continued, Well, then you can exchange it with something. Tao Tao is my cousin, but you're not. You even called me dumb. The lead child, who was the quickest to adapt, asked, Xiaolan, what can we use to exchange for candy? This child had even changed how he addressed Tao Tao. Do you know about the wild duck eggs in the reed beds? You can exchange three wild duck eggs for two Mao, and with that money, you can buy candy. But you have to go in pairs to find the eggs, and you can't go near rivers with water. Really? Whether it's true or false, trying it will let you know. In the county town, duck eggs weren't worth only two Mao for three, and Xiaolan was busy for nothing in her business endeavors. By letting the children collect wild duck eggs, she was utilizing the cheapest labor possible, compressing labor costs to the extreme. Xiaolan thought she was quite resourceful. After being reborn into 1983, her first thought was to exploit child labor. The allure of Tu Mao to the children was significant. These children were born in the 1970s, and during New Year, they received only a few Mao as their lucky money. With just this amount, they could buy candy and fireworks to play with for a long time. A little over an hour later, a nine-year-old girl returned with her younger sister, having actually found over a dozen wild duck eggs. Xiaolan checked the eggs to make sure they were good and then kept her promise. She didn't cheat the kids, even if some weren't great at math. You've got 16 eggs. That's one yuan and seven fen. She got the change from the village's convenience store. The little girl held the money, not knowing where to put her excited hands. Her younger sister drooled, muttering candy. The older girl took her sister home, and with more than a yuan, they wouldn't dare to spend it without their parents' permission. Xiaolan stopped her and said, If you have chicken eggs at home, you can also sell them to me. I live in Tato's house, but you should ask your parents before selling any eggs. Xiaolan had mobilized the young scouts, and within two hours, they had cleared the reed beds near Qijing village. Wild ducks were quacking, flapping their wings as they moved around in the reed beds. Some children even found newly hatched ducklings. Xiaolan asked if they wanted to give them to her since she had a place to raise ducks. She planned to bring them back for Lu Fun to keep herself occupied. In total, Xiaolan collected more than 90 wild duck eggs. She would find out later that evening if anyone came to sell her chicken eggs. When Xiaolan returned home, she found that her uncle had caught quite a few loaches and many yellow eels. They had more than 10 gene of Christian carp from the rice fields. All of them were kept in a water tank against the wall. Lu Yong said, we'll raise them for a few days until they expel the dirty stuff from their stomachs, and then we can eat them. Li Fomei had cooked radishes with pork bones, and the entire yard was filled with a delicious aroma. During mealtime, no one would come knocking at the door. They were all savoring something good, so it was better not to intrude on their enjoyment. Coming to visit during this time would be ill-timed. Lu Fun was weaving straw baskets under the eaves, and she had already woven a sizable pile. She asked, Xiaolan, do you think these baskets are okay? Of course, they were. Wild duck eggs and chicken eggs would fit nicely inside. Tao Tao puffed up his chest proudly and said, Xiaolan bought lots of duck eggs. She even bought me candy. Li Feng Mei, who was in the kitchen, heard this and was delighted. Xiaolan hadn't been as patient with Tao Tao in the past. The child was her life. Xiaolan's kind treatment of Tao Tao was something that Li Feng Mei, as his mother, naturally appreciated. 
For a moment, the atmosphere in the whole family was relaxed and joyful. Xiaolan felt that there was potential for these days. Her decision to leave Day Village was absolutely correct. Chapter 14, The Egg Emporium The soup made with large pork bones and radishes was a creamy white color. The meat had become tender and the radishes were soft, without any tough fibers. When poured over rice, even six-year-old Tao Tao could eat a large bowl, let alone the adults. Xiaolan insisted on adding some fried duck eggs, but Lu Yong said it was dipping into her business profits and warned her not to make it a habit. Xiaolan thought she couldn't just freeload off her uncle's household, so she covered the family's dining expenses herself. The freshly harvested tender Chinese chives were stir-fried with wild duck eggs, effectively masking the wild flavor of the eggs. Following Xiaolan's method, I added some vinegar while stirring the eggs, and they turned out tender and fluffy, just like chicken eggs. Li Feng Mei praised the dish, and Lu Fun was delighted. People often said that Xiaolan couldn't handle her responsibilities, had no practical skills, and didn't fit the traditional roles. But Lu Fun had never given up on her daughter, and now, Xiaolan seemed to be getting more mature. How could Lu Fin not be pleased? Xiaolan also found the family's meals quite satisfying. In her previous life, she had certainly tasted many high-end dishes. Considering the overall living standards of rural areas in 1983, Lu Yang's culinary skills were already high. This was partly due to his ability to earn money and his willingness to support Xiaolan and her daughter. After lunch, Lu Yong went back to work in the fields, and this time, Li Feng Mei joined him. Lu Fen also wanted to go, but Lu Yong insisted that she stay home and weave more baskets. He said, this is Xiao Lan's opportunity to make money. Don't let her down. Xiao Lan refreshed her bicycle skills on the 28-inch bike. In her past life, she had no elders to rely on, relied on kind-hearted people's sponsorships for her education, and relied on her own efforts when she started working. Riding a bicycle for business during the harsh winter, even over dozens of kilometers, felt effortless. Later on, as her career progressed, her expenses for business trips were fully reimbursed, and she even bought a car herself. She hadn't touched such an old-style bicycle for almost 20 years. At first, she was unaccustomed to it, but she quickly became more skilled. Tao Tao watched with eager eyes, but at the age of six, he was still too young. Xiaolan had no choice but to put him on the back seat, hugging her waist. She rode her bike, carrying him around the village to play. On the way, a woman who looked familiar called her. Xiaolan, I heard from my oldest daughter that you want to buy eggs. What's the price? Xiaolan got off the bike and said, Auntie, I am indeed buying eggs. Since it's the busy season and everyone is too busy to sell them in the county town, I'm collecting them now to sell later in the county. Of course, I also need to make a little profit. How about 12 fun for one egg? The woman's family name was Chin, and she was the fourth oldest in her family, so everyone called her Aunt Chin. Aunt Chin furrowed her brows and said, I heard they can sell for 15 fun each in the county town. Xiaolan explained with a cheerful smile, the price of eggs in the county town changes all the time. I won't hide it from you, sometimes they're 15 fun, sometimes they're even cheaper. In case I can't sell them and they get damaged on the way, I'm taking on some risk. One shouldn't rush into business planning to lose money. There would be some loss on the way, and besides, Chijing village was quite far from the county town. It was fine for the occasional trip, but during busy times, going back and forth would take up a lot of time. Who had that kind of time? Aunt Chen said, all right, I'll sell them to you. 
I'll go home and get the eggs. Almost every family had a couple of hens laying eggs. Money for oil, salt, soy sauce, vinegar, and seasonings came from selling eggs. In the summer, the hens feasted on grass seeds and small insects, making them plump and fat. Two hens could lay over 20 eggs in half a month. Aunt Chen quickly brought Xiaolan over 20 eggs, and the money was paid on the spot. This act of selling eggs to Xiaolan soon spread throughout the village, marking the opening of Xiaolan's egg business. Lu Fen couldn't help but pick up the pace of weaving straw baskets. Xiaolan spent over a day collecting all the eggs from Qijing village and even from the neighboring village. With only 70 odd yuan as her capital, she had acquired nearly 400 chicken eggs and 200 wild duck eggs. She had to keep some cash for herself, and for now, Xiaolan had to stop her collection. Lu Fen had never seen so many eggs piled up, and the baskets were filled to the brim. It was quite an impressive sight. Lu Fen was worried that these eggs might not sell, and the family wouldn't be able to consume them all. Moreover, who would spend several tens of yuan on eggs? It equated to more than a month's salary for urban workers. Without the two major factories in Anqin County, Xiaolan wouldn't dare to collect so many eggs. She said, I'll take 200 chicken eggs and 100 wild duck eggs to the city tomorrow. With over a thousand workers in two large factories, 300 eggs could be easily consumed, provided she could find a suitable channel. Relying solely on retail had low efficiency, so Xiaolan thought about finding a better sales channel. Although official eggs were only 1.2 yuan per gene, the supply was seriously lacking. Some units' logistics departments couldn't always purchase cheap eggs. There was potential in this situation, worth a try. Even late at night, Li Fomei helped weave the baskets. They shortened the dry straw and stuffed it in the gaps to increase stability during transport. Tao Dao was excited and couldn't sleep, eagerly waiting for Xiaolan to take him to the city. However, it was destined to disappoint the little guy. Xiaolan and her daughter set out at 5 o'clock in the early morning. For safety, as Xiaolan was too good-looking, Lu Fen was worried, and Lu Yong was concerned too. Riding a bicycle significantly shortened the time it took to get to the city. When they arrived at the spot where they sold duck eggs last time, it was just getting light outside. Today, the small market outside the agricultural machinery factory was exceptionally desolate. The locals were busy in the fields and didn't have time to come to the county town to sell their goods. As soon as Xiaolan parked her bike, a previous familiar customer recognized her. She was conspicuous in appearance and efficient in her dealings. People who had interacted with her before couldn't forget her. Hey, are you here to sell eggs again? Auntie, are you buying eggs today? I have chicken eggs. I haven't finished the duck eggs I bought a few days ago. Xiaolan didn't miss any potential customers. She said, duck eggs make delicious preserved eggs and salted duck eggs. But for steaming, boiling, and frying, chicken eggs are better. She opened her back basket, where the eggs were neatly arranged, seemingly saying, come eat me. Auntie couldn't help but swallow her saliva. She had indeed used the duck eggs she bought the other day to make salted duck eggs. Should she buy a few chicken eggs as well? Xiaolin noticed she was interested and said, I sell chicken eggs for 1.4 fin each for regular customers, and the method for wild duck eggs is the same as before. In the state-owned stores, chicken eggs were 1.2 yuan per gene, with 8 to 10 eggs per gene, which was cheaper than what Xiaolan sold. However, they had to have a sufficient supply to do so, and it wasn't easy to find cheap eggs. Auntie couldn't resist Xiaolan's persuasion, and she ended up buying 10 eggs. 
As the workers arrived on their bicycles one after another, Xiaolan's business picked up. She stood there confidently, and her striking face attracted more onlookers. The more people looked at her, the more likely they were to buy eggs from her. She didn't resemble the other villagers who were always furtive, as if they were doing something sneaky. Taking advantage of the time when the workers at the agricultural machinery factory were on their way to work, Xiaolan sold most of the eggs she had brought. She said to Lu Fen, You see, it's actually quite safe. I can go to the city on my own tomorrow. Someone had to stay home to collect the eggs. It wasn't right to trouble Xiaolan's aunt all the time. She had her own work, and using another pair of hands would be beneficial for the village. After collecting the eggs around Qijing village, they would need to go to other places, so having both of them come to the county town would be a waste of labor. Lu Fen wasn't good with words, and she couldn't bring herself to ask people to buy things, so Xiaolan would have to go to the city herself. By late morning, Xiaolan had sold all the eggs she had brought with her. She was getting ready to change her location to outside the meat processing plant tomorrow. With plenty of loose change and not much to count, but based on the buying price, she had definitely made a profit today, even though a few eggs were crushed, and these losses were unavoidable. The busy rice harvest season had arrived, and Xiaolan's egg business was thriving. People began calling her Egg Beauty, and she soon caught the attention of someone with ulterior motives. Chapter 15 Targeted by Hoodlums With the support of her loving uncle, Xiaolan and her mother enjoyed a comfortable life. Especially during the busy farming season, where every household was busy with the harvest, Xiaolan and her mother didn't face any trouble from the people in Qijing village. Xiaolan started selling eggs in the city, and within just two days, her business was thriving. She had a way with words, was exceptionally good-looking, had principles in her business dealings, and was generous within those principles. The workers from the agricultural machinery factory and meat processing plant all knew about the egg beauty who had appeared outside their factories. Her eggs were fresh and in high demand. Starting with a daily trip to Anqing County, within two days, she had sold nearly 2,000 eggs. Although riding her bicycle back and forth between the countryside and the county town was exhausting, her hard work was paying off, averaging about 10 yuan in earnings per day. With little capital and no connections, Xiaolan had many ideas for making money, but she had to take it slow. Earning this much money each day was satisfying for her, and Lu Fun was pleased. In the evening, Xiaolan returned home, and mother and daughter counted their daily income. Xiaolan emptied her pockets onto the table, and most of the money consisted of small change, one yuan, five jiao, and even fin notes. Xiaolan vowed that she had never seen paper money with Fen as the face value in her past life, and the total was more than she had ever seen in the past few days. Lu Fen organized the money and couldn't help but feel like she was dreaming. She asked, is making money really this easy? Don't other people know about it? Lu Fen's question was good, it showed she was starting to think. Xiaolan smiled and said, knowing how to make money doesn't mean everyone can do this business. In the 1980s, opportunities were indeed everywhere, but not everyone became a millionaire. When opportunity comes, you need courage and luck. Xiaolan's egg business was both laborious and risky. If the eggs didn't sell, what would she do? If they got damaged on the way, how would she handle it? Nearly a hundred yuan in capital could easily be lost. Even if Xiaolan experienced losses, she could always start over. She had climbed the corporate ladder to a high-ranking position in a multinational company in her previous life. These minor setbacks couldn't affect her. 
But for rural people in 1983, losing nearly 100 yuan was equivalent to half a year's savings. For those with thin financial reserves, how many times could they afford to take such losses? Xiaolan put the money away and said, this egg business won't be as good in a few days. I asked my uncle to help collect loaches for me. I want to try selling them in the provincial capital. Loaches were abundant in Lu's rice fields, and catching a few dozen pounds of loaches, Christian carp, and yellow eels was easy in the countryside. However, loaches were not popular for consumption in that era, as they could taste muddy if not prepared properly. Lu Fen had previously prepared the loaches Xiaolan brought home, removing all the mud and sand. She fried them in a pan with a little cooking oil until they turned golden on both sides, then stewed them in a pot until the fish meat was soft and had blended into the soup. It didn't take much effort and was an effective way to feed the family. She took good care of Lu Fun and Tao Dao, both of whom needed more nutrition. For Tao Dao, it was crucial to ensure he got enough calcium to grow taller, so Xiaolan cooked a variety of dishes for her family. The dishes were simple but tasty, and even though her culinary skills were just average, she had a wealth of experience from her previous life, having tried various regional cuisines while entertaining clients. Lu Yong had previously brought home some loaches, Christian carp, and yellow eels from the rice fields. These fish were simply stewed in a spicy sauce with some tofu and garlic chives added, resulting in a delicious meal. The food arrangements were excellent, and Xiaolan's aunt, Li Fomei, was very satisfied with her. These days, Lu Fen couldn't accompany Xiaolan to the city. Both mother and daughter stayed back home, and they couldn't just watch Lu Yong and his wife go to the fields to harvest rice. Lu Fen also had to help. She advised her daughter, you be careful when you go to the county town alone. Before heading out, Xiaolan wanted to make sure her mother and Lu Yong were okay. While her mother was busy in the fields, she reminded her, I know, mom. Don't overexert yourself. Riding her bicycle to the county town, Xiaolan had filled most of the market share for eggs from the two factories in the past few days. It wasn't realistic to expect someone to buy so many eggs every day. She usually didn't take shortcuts, but today, after a delay in selling eggs, she decided to ride her bicycle through a small alley. What she didn't know was that her reputation as the egg beauty had already spread in the county town. Beautiful and carrying cash from egg sales every day, some people were thinking about taking advantage of her. Xiaolan was feeling a bit smug, as she had been carrying a large pair of scissors with her for several days but hadn't encountered any hoodlums. As she rode through the alley, suddenly, her bicycle's basket was grabbed by someone, and that person said, Hey, girl, why are you in such a hurry? We want to buy eggs. The abrupt stop nearly caused Xiaolan to fall, and her heavy basket hit the ground, causing a pang of heartache as she thought about how many eggs might have broken. One man quickly darted in front of her, blocking her path, while two others held onto her bicycle. Xiaolan stood up straight, used her sleeve to protect her big scissors, which she now held in her hand. The situation seemed quite dangerous. Three young men with a menacing appearance, lecherous gazes, and vulgar intentions were staring at her from head to toe. Even though she was dressed modestly to protect herself from the sun, their eyes seemed to strip her bare. Xiaolan didn't panic like most girls would. She didn't waste time with words and immediately opened her mouth and screamed, Help! Someone is trying to molest a woman. Help! They've trapped me in this alley. Her sharp, piercing voice startled the three hoodlums. One of them hurriedly moved to cover Xiaolan's mouth, but she raised her scissors and prepared to stab him. The man cried out in pain and let go, scolding, You bitch, 
Do you think we didn't investigate your background? You dare to use scissors to stab me. Xiaolan had her back against the wall, scissors in hand, and she continued to scream loudly, calling for help. There was also a bicycle blocking her path, making it difficult for anyone to approach her. One of the hoodlums grew impatient and yanked the bicycle away, causing Xiaolan's scream to stop abruptly. She was momentarily frozen, and the hoodlum smirked and said, You pretend to be a virtuous woman, but we all know you're a loose woman, Xiaolan from Dave Village. <laughs>